So I want to do a deep dive with you today into what we know about the marriage of Megan Good and Devon Franklin. Now that news has broken that Devon Franklin filed for divorce from Megan Good just five days before Christmas. If you missed my video with the details of the divorce, click the link in the top right hand corner to check that out. At this point, the reason for their divorce has not yet been made public, but their divorce is definitely sending shockwaves through the Christian community, especially since Devon is a preacher and a leader in the Christian church. And a lot of people are shocked that he would divorce his wife and others feel that they're not a good match in the first place. Even though Megan has shared time and time again that she is a Christian, she loves the Lord, and that she puts her relationship with God first, a lot of people don't seem to actually believe her, judging from how they talk about her online. And when Devon married her, a lot of people felt that they were not equally yoked. There's been a lot of discussion in the Christian community lately about Christian leaders like pastors and gospel music artists marrying women who don't appear to be enveloped in the church world. Instead of marrying what some people call churchy women or conservative women, they're marrying what some people in the church call worldly women. <laughs> and for those of you who are not familiar with that term, worldly basically means women who don't dress or act modestly. Actresses like Megan Good and Adrienne Bailon are often pointed to as examples of that. So let's take a look back at how Megan and Devon got together and the controversy they faced in their marriage. The two seem to have gotten off to a good start in their marriage, in my opinion, after meeting on the set of a movie and not beginning to date until after the movie wrap. They shared with Tamron Hall that they were both celibate at that time and they were both serious about finding a life partner. The first ones to really out of Hollywood start talking <laughs> about it. Well, you were. Yeah. What made you decide to go there? Because you didn't have to tell people what was happening in your bedroom, but you did. Or not happening. <laughs> Eventually happening. Eventually happening. But not right away. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> right. We had to wait. <laughs> you know, I think we just wanted to share because uh, relationships are so hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, truth be told, there's not a lot of guidance out there. And so we wanted to share our truth. And yeah. that waiting to have sex was a critical part of the healthy foundation of our marriage and relationship. And we both were doing it independently. You know, I had yeah. been doing it for years before Megan and I got together uh, because, you know, being out in the world, speaking and preaching, telling one thing, there was a time when I was doing something different. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to reconcile who I was in public and in person, and in private, excuse me. So that's why I decided to wait. Yeah. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna wait until marriage after I wasn't waiting. And then Megan and I got together and found out she had been waiting. Yeah. yeah. And Megan, <laughs> as I understand it, you've said in the past, you knew this was your husband yeah. before he knew. Yeah. How did that, how's that possible? Well, it's really interesting because we had met four years prior to working on Jumping the Broom. And he was the executive on Jumping the Broom. I was the actress on the film. And I was on the tail end of kind of um, not so great relationship. Not because the person, we just weren't right for each other. But um, I really got a chance to get to know him on set. And I thought, man, that's the kind of guy I wish I could marry. And that was it. He's the guy who gives you the job. That's, that's all I thought about it. And then I got back from Nova Scotia filming. And I was like, man, Lord, I'm at a really hard place, like at a standstill in my life, and I'm really hitting a wall. What am I supposed to be doing? And the first thing that God told me was that it was time to get out of that relationship. The second thing that God told me was that it was time to be celibate. And the third thing that God told me was that Devon was my husband. And I was like, okay. And I was like, <laughs> so, and I didn't know him that well. And I was like, so what do I do, Lord? And God was just like, nothing, just work on yourself. So I spent the next nine months um, healing, working on damage from childhood, growing up in the business, things you just go through in life. And about five months in, I started telling friends and family that Devon was my husband. They were like, oh, really? They're like, does he know that? And I'm like, no. They're like, so you had not crazy. even gone on a date? No, no. Didn't know anything about it? I didn't talk to him Because this could have gone real creepy. Uh, yeah. She's <laughs> telling everybody, and somebody says, Devon, she, I don't know her. I don't her. know what she's talking about. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just, at the, at the time, I was an executive um, for Sony yeah. working on the movie, and she was one of the stars. So I was like, yeah. hey, you know what? That's the talent. I'm the executive. Like, I would never cross that line. Uh, and also, it's Megan Good. So I'm thinking, like, yo, like, that's just, you know, Megan Good, the stars, the moon, you know, they're all in another stratosphere and so when it came to reality that like wait a minute at the jumping the broom premiere nine months after the movie was done 
we started talking and it felt like, wait, I think Megan is interested in me. Oh, meanwhile, I had told all my girlfriends, I was like, yeah. meet my husband tonight. And everyone's like, okay, so we're following him around the party like teenage schoolgirls, like looking at him and stuff. And then we went out two weeks later and then yeah. literally from the time of going out, it was 10 months later we were engaged and two months later we were married. So yeah. over the span of what, 13 months, you yes. were yeah. celibate in the relationship. Yes. Um, you make this pledge to each other, you make it to God, but we're all humans and our bodies react sure. to things. Absolutely. So did you avoid kissing? Did you, a massage was out of order? I mean, because th these things, I'm just being honest. Okay, Come on, we're all you're getting all of it. Come on, Tamara. I mean, you know my husband. Yes, I do. Right, my, my husband, like, massaged my shoulder. I'm like, hey, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Maybe not as often because we have a baby now, but hey, you know. But it's like, how did you avoid triggers? You know, it's one of the things we talk about, you know, in the book. We talk about the power of delayed gratification. Mm -hmm. We live in a time where everybody th wants everything now, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of value when we just wait and sit back and say, you know what, I'm gonna delay this because if I do, I'll get what I actually want when it's time for it. So mm -hmm. for us, we had to know our triggers. Now, that means some nights we could not Netflix and chill, okay? We couldn't do it. We, Did you cuddle? Some you didn't days, stay in the same but house. Every day was different. No, we no, had separate houses. Yeah. We didn't move in until uh, And we you got didn't married. have any so sleepovers? No, we, we had sleepovers. Oh. Yeah. But again, you gotta know your boundaries. You gotta know your triggers. So pillow in the middle? Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> yeah. Really? It just depends, it just depends. Like, depends on how strong you felt on that day. So some yeah. days I'd be weak, she'd be strong. Some days she'd be weak, I'd be strong. So yeah. it was both of us wanting the same thing. Even though Megan and Devon shared that they share the same belief system when it comes to Christianity, Megan was still ridiculed by some church folks and non-believers who took issue with the way she dressed. They felt she showed off too much skin and it went viral when a woman at a conference confronted Megan and demanded that she quote, cover up. You need to get the Holy Ghost in order to be able to fight the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. You have to be born again. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you not, you're not gonna defeat anything. You cannot, okay? My question is this. Amen. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. Thank you. You are beautiful. I'm gonna say something to you. I no 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 no. This is not offensive. I I'm, yeah I do. There is not offensive, but I was at a, um, the grocery store, and I looked at a newsstand, and I saw you, and you had your breast shot. Mm -hmm. okay. It's okay. It's all right. Go ahead. It's all right. It's all right. So, so I wasn't going to come here. I wasn't. But the Lord brought me here to see you. You're beautiful. You are a beautiful young woman, and your testimony is awesome. It's awesome. Amen. Amen. And the Lord let me come to push past the judgment. Hold up. Okay, because this is real. Because you have to make sure what you say and what you do match up. You understand? Okay, so we gonna cover up, right? We gonna cover Wait a minute, up. wait a minute, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, that ain't, that ain't, no. That is not what we're here for. She's not gonna cover up. She's gonna wear what she wanna wear in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. She gonna wear what she wants to wear in the name of Jesus. Yes, she will. Yes, she will. Yes, she will. Absolutely. God bless you. We love you. I love you dearly. But there is that she has been as Christian as she has been that she is right now when she's worn whatever she got us what she wanted to wear. So uh uh, we ain't we ain't doing that. No. I love you. Y'all y'all about to see a whole nother Devon. Y'all ain't seen. Remember, I am from Oakland now. <laughs> All right. Shoot, that way it if we have questions. We'll take questions. We will take questions. 
But if you have comments, you can save those for social media or for your prayer closet. Amen. Thank you all. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your love and support. You can tell from Megan's voice trembling when she spoke that she was pretty traumatized by that experience. It sounded like she was holding back tears. And the sad part about it was that Megan continued to be embarrassed by church folks and non-believers throughout her marriage to Devon. She went viral again when she wore a very revealing dress to the 2016 BET Awards and ended up presenting a gospel music award instead of the rap award she was told she would be presenting. She later shared in an interview that the BET Award Show production set her up to present the gospel music award on purpose once they saw how she was dressed. Here's a flashback of my coverage of the interview where she revealed that she believed she was purposely set up. And she recently did an interview with the Daily Beast and talked about the viral moment when she wore a plunging, beautiful velvet blue dress to the BET Awards in 2013. And BET actually changed up what she was doing and asked her to present a gospel music award in that plunging dress. She said, it's interesting because if you're able to track down any interview, I've made it a point to always mention God. That's the reason for everything. Y'all get that. She said, I was never the best, the prettiest, or the most talented, but everything I've done is because God has allowed it. She went on to say, when Devon and I got together, I really came under fire from a lot of Christians and folks in the church. And then she goes on to say, and then it was the BET Awards and the blue dress that I wore. And at the 11th hour, when they switched me from giving out a rap award to giving out a gospel award. And then I got home and saw that I was trending on Twitter with all these Christians just dragging me. And I was like, this is horribly painful because it's the one community that's supposed to be the safe community and that represents the core of my identity that's attacking me. And then she goes on to say the next year for the BET Awards, they reached out to have me present and the script was with me and Nick Cannon and he was going, hey, Megan, I see that you're in a different dress this year, a lot more covered up. And she was supposed to say, ha ha ha, like she was supposed to laugh about it. And she said she called them when they gave her that script. She called them, but she said she called them and said, I don't feel like this is funny. For one, that was not a funny experience. It was traumatizing. And two, I'm not going to go up there and act like I'm apologizing to someone when I have nothing to apologize for. OK, they set her up at this point. I think it's clear that they set her up to present that gospel award in that dress. It was a whole setup. And she said their response was you either say it or you don't present. And she said, so I was like, okay, then I won't present. So she stuck to her guns. And she said, when I got off the phone, I cried. I was like, would you do this to Gabrielle Union or to Raji? You have this perception of me and it's crazy that you want to hold me to what that should be. I'm not going for it. No one will ever control what I do or how I do it. It always has to be spirit led and how I feel God feels about it. It took me a long time to not feel so hurt and so affected. Now. It seems as if people took issue with the way Megan dressed despite being married to a preacher and they enjoyed poking fun at her, which could have taken a toll on her and Devon's marriage. Some people also took issue and take issue with the fact that Megan is an actress that does sex scenes. She shared that people felt that since she is a married woman, she shouldn't do those types of scenes with other men. Here's what Megan told D.L. Hughley about the feedback she received from people because of her acting. So being married to a preacher, how do yeah. you prepare for yeah. a sex scene? You know what's interesting about him? It's like, I'll call him and I'll be like, okay, honey, I'm getting ready to do the sex scene. And he'll be like, 
okay, well, just make it look real because you really want the audience to root for you. You want them wow. to care about the relationship mm. and that's what's going to drive the movie <laughs> like, real, like, oh, you really? know, through. So he's like, so just, you Get know. Get into it. Go, you know, I'm like, Are okay, well, what do you think? crazy? No, yeah, that's like, trash. Then he right. punch the wall. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you loved it. Like, yeah. He saw what he was doing, huh? but you would just yeah. go, go ahead on. Just. No, he's like, it's, it's kind of amazing because I think, you know, the great thing about him is like, he wasn't looking to change me in marriage. Like right. he knows who I was before marriage. And so right. there is growth that happens together individually and collectively, but it wasn't like, okay, so now you're married, you can't do this anymore, right. I don't want you to do that, blah, blah, right. blah. It's do you like, go to church with him all the time? I do, not all the time though, because if I'm being completely honest, um, my experience with some church folks has not been that positive. Yeah. Can, and, I, can I be, uh, yeah. cause I don't, I don't go to church cause the cover charge is too high. But I even, I had a conversation with your your husband who yeah. I, and I, we had a, you know, a you very deep. honest conversation. Yeah. yeah. But I think that a lot of people are apathetic about that experience because they yeah. have had so many hypocritical ones. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate because we're supposed to be the biggest lovers. Right. And it's like even if you disagree with someone or you don't think what they're doing is right, you're supposed to sometimes mind your own business and pray right. for that person. Right. Other times you're supposed to correct in love if that's what right. God told you to do. Right. And there was no correction in love. It was like a complete assault. Yeah. Right. And I, I remember, remember that. You, I remember that. I remember, I remember that. that. They, talk, they had an There's issue with the way you dressed, with the way oh. you walked, and just yeah. everything. And was I'm always already an issue. like, I'm waiting for, for the on the timeline. Of, I can't believe she did this sexy. Right. She's a married woman, right. blah, blah, blah. Right. At the end of the day, for me, it's like I still love Christians. I still, I will always love the church. Right. I love my Lord and Savior, period, point blank. That's first and foremost over everything. Right. But even though I love some of those people, I have to love them from a distance because mm -hmm. my spirit is too sensitive and I take things like, and even though I've gotten to a place of like balance, but I, I'm the type of person, like if I see someone crying, I'll start crying. Yeah. I'm extremely sensitive, so right. I have to protect my spirit because those people don't always know but what it, they're doing. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it seem as if that they would edify your spirit? Like it, mm -hmm. that would be Supposed when you go to, to get away mm -hmm. from all the, like That's you're in Hollywood. Be. Yeah. If, if this is a, this is a funny uh, uh, juxtaposition, you're in Hollywood, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah. Where you would think that you would need to go to people from church to get away from the people in Hollywood. Wow. Yeah. Not only did people judge Megan for not being conservative and Devon for supporting her, but they also judged them for not having children. Some people expect women to have children within the first few years of getting married, and things didn't work out that way for the two of them. Megan shared that she ended up going through the arduous process of freezing her eggs so that she can have a child later in life. You two opened up this year about freezing your eggs. Yeah. Why did you decide to freeze them? Um, for me, it was really about, you know, at 35, I was like, okay, I don't know when we're going to have kids, but I wanted to be preventative. And even though, by the grace of God, I'm believing that I'll be able to get pregnant naturally the first time, I was thinking about, well, what about when I'm 40 or 41 or 42? What if I want two? What if mm -hmm. I want three? And I just wanted to be, uh, I wanted to use wisdom. It says faith without works is dead. Yes. So the works mm -hmm. for me is like, how do I meet God halfway with my... Oh, very yeah. nice. Very so nice. smart. Yeah. That does make sense. Is there something about this process that most people don't talk about or, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, for me, one of the biggest things was is that I got depressed afterwards, mm -hmm. like maybe a month later, because you are being pumped with a bunch of hormones. And it does cause a chemical imbalance, and everybody's mm -hmm. different. But for me, I got a little bit depressed, and I just, like, felt off. And, mm -hmm. it, and it was kind of a weird thing, you know? But once I came through it, at the end of the day, I, I, it was worth it to yes. me to have that peace right. to know I'm okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. Right. We appreciate you talking about it. Yeah, yeah. That you're doing yeah. so well now. Although Megan has not spoken much publicly about having a child with Devon, trying to conceive could also have taken a toll on their marriage. In any case, their marriage has come to an end with Devon filing for divorce on December 20th, stating that the marriage has irreconcilable differences. The two released a joint statement about their divorce saying, after much prayer and consideration, we have decided to go into our future separately, but forever connected. We celebrate almost a decade of marriage together and a love that is eternal. There's no one at fault. We believe this is the next best chapter in the evolution of our love. We are incredibly grateful for the life-changing years we've spent together as husband and wife. So you guys, leave a comment and let me know what you think about Megan Good and Devon Franklin ending their controversial marriage and going their separate ways. Do you think outside influences affected their marriage? Leave a comment and let me know what you think. As always, thanks for watching. Layla, Layla, tell us it all.